a very good morning to all those that are listening to us, our partners, our friends, our family, and those that this video has made its way to. Today is the 9th of August. It is Women's Day, and as you can see, I've got a wonderful bunch of flowers, beautiful bouquet of flowers on my right, and on my left, a wonderful scripture uh, highlighting the woman. And it says, Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord will fulfill his promise to her. And that you can find in Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. We know that the woman play a special role in society. They most probably, in most instances, have the lion's share of responsibility. My oh my, do they fulfill their responsibility Amen. well. So dear ladies, dear moms, dear grandmoms, we bless you and we say have a wonderful Women's Day and also know that you are special. Life would not be the same without you. Also, today is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Won't you get ready to join us for a powerful service today? I'm going to introduce Pastor Amos who will open for us in a word of prayer. I bless you. Shall we pray this morning? Father, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, we want to thank you at this wonderful and a blessed Sunday that we are committing into your hands in Jesus' name. We ask of you, my God, to anoint the speaker of the word, that my Father, as he shall open up his mouth to declare your oracles, the Holy Spirit shall do an outpouring of revelation. Let there be an anointing that is going to break the yoke of the enemy. My Father, we pray that whoever is under the sound of our voice unto this Sunday, may they be blessed, may they be delivered indeed. Yes. May they find solution Amen. to their problems, oh Amen. God, through the voice of your word this morning. Mm. Use your servant, oh God, as a prophet sent unto the nations indeed. Father, as we also remember women across the world, we also pray for a special touch in Jesus' name. Yes. We pray that this message yes. will do something unto women of today all over the world. Yes. In the name of Jesus, my God, we trust you for miracles. We believe in you for testimony yes, indeed. Yes, my Lord. Father, we declare the Lordship of Christ through the ministration of this word yes. in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Amen. Okay, you can now join us in worship as we await for the word of God. Thank you.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Would you just welcome us from Durban, South Africa, Christ Kingdom Ministries, as we welcome the senior pastor of the house, Pastor Anil Manilal, that's going to bring you a definite life-changing word in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just welcome Pastor Anil Manilal today. Beloved, greetings to you in the sovereign and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I am privileged and honored to have you connect with us this morning. And I trust you will be blessed. Once again, to all the women out there, happy Women's Day. I pray God's choicest blessing will be upon you. Beloved, today being Women's Day, I want to minister and bring a message of encouragement to women. But this word, you can also apply to yourselves. Today, the 9th of August, 2020, is a day set aside to acknowledge and honor women in South Africa. I choose this day to honor and bless all women throughout the nations of the world. This message is to encourage you and lead you to your breakthrough. Women, in Jesus' name, I declare this day is the day for your divine relocation. I pray in Jesus' name, God will divinely shift you into a new that he has waiting for you. Every one of you is precious to God. You are indeed special to him. Yes, you are. This day, the 9th of August 2020, has a powerful prophetic release. 9 of the 8, 2020. Numbers have a powerful prophetic meaning. And I don't want to miss this opportunity to release it upon you this morning. All I want you to do is take it by faith. The number 9 speaks about finality, birthing, completeness, and holiness. In Galatians 5, 22 to 23, the ESV speaks about the nine fruits of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want to pray this over your life now. I prophesy this day will be your day of finality and completeness of those things you have been praying and trusting God for. I prophesy there will be a birthing forth of a new life in Christ. There will be a birthing forth of the blessing of God upon your life. I pray the fruit of the spirit of love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control, and patience will be your portion. It will be manifest in your life in Jesus' mighty name. This is the eighth month. The number eight symbolizes resurrection and regeneration. It means new beginnings and new order. I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus of over your life this morning that this day shall be a day of new beginnings. I prophesy the old life hurts, abuse, suffering, and sin be over in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray you enter into your new life of blessings. I pray you enter into the new order that God has purposed for you. I pray in Jesus' name, God will resurrect that which the enemy has stolen and destroyed in your life. I prophesy a regeneration in your life, a new birth by the grace of God. I pray restitution in your life. You, beloved, shall recover all. You shall be reimbursed seven times more that was stolen from your life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen, so be it. The Bible is not about stories, but it is full of accounts of God's divine intervention throughout all ages. God divinely shifted the lives of individuals and nations out of calamities and suffering and torment and brought them to that place of breakthrough and brought them to that place of blessedness and peace. God brought forth a divine relocation, both physical and spiritual, shifting people to their ordained purpose. 
and shifting people to their destiny from lack to abundance, from suffering to blessings, from cast out to be the chosen of God, from abuse to protection, from sickness to health, even physically moving them to a place of joy and peace, to a place of purpose and destiny. Those who turn to God, the great I am, the almighty God, to Jesus Christ, open themselves to come under the hand of God's almighty intervention and God's deliverance. When God intervenes, beloved, nothing and no one can stop it. Women, God is able to turn your life around for good. God is able to take you out of the abuse, suffering, torment, and lack, and sickness, and sin. God is able to give you a new life. He is able to break through for you. He is able to make a way for you. God is able to take you out of the torment. God is able this day to turn around your situations in the mighty name of Jesus. Those of you who are bound shall be set free. You that are held captive in sexual assault and slavery. You that are held captive in abuse and poverty. You that are held captive in sickness and loneliness. In barrenness and fear. In worry and grief and wickedness. This day is a day of divine shifting. Today could be your day of suddenly. God will fight for you. God will make a way for you. Call upon the name of Jesus and he will answer. Turn to him who is the only deliverer, who gives hope where there's no hope. Beloved, are you ready to be relocated from sufferings and setbacks to blessedness and glory? It will happen if you believe this morning. Father, encourage their faith this morning. Protect their faith. In Jesus mighty name. This morning. I pray. You will set them on the path. That you have chosen. You will set them on the path. Of your divine providence. You will lead them. To the divinely predetermined end. When all things appear helpless. And hopeless. Beloved. There is hope. In Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is a familiar account in the Bible, which I believe is exactly what this message is about. It is found in Ruth, chapters 1 to 4, inclusive. It is a story about Ruth. You can read this chapter later. It is short, just four chapters. The story of Ruth and Naomi took place during the time when judges ruled and not kings. These judges ruled and lived according to their own standards and ways, which ultimately brought much suffering and heartache to the people. The time setting was approximately a thousand years before Jesus Christ coming upon the earth to redeem mankind from death. The story starts with a man named Elimelech, an Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judea, leaving his country and going to Moab together with his wife Naomi and his two sons Malam and Chilion. They left due to the famine in the land and went to seek refuge in a foreign land of idolaters called Moab. It is strange that Bethlehem was going through a famine when the name means house of bread. The Hebrew word for Bethlehem, Beth is house and Lehem is bread. The house of bread has no more bread. Wow. What is going on? It was due to the sin of the people. Beloved names in the Bible have significant meanings. By giving no particular names, it was meant to manifest in the lives of that individual. For instance, Elimelech means my God is king. He should have been the one who trusted God. He was not to be shaken by circumstances. Yet when trouble was ripe, yet when the famine came to Bethlehem, he decides to lead his people to a place where they worship strange gods. 
The Moabites worshipped the fish god called Chemosh. The Moabites were born of an incestuous relationship between Lot and his daughter in Genesis 19.36. Elimelech should have known the word of God that has been taught down the ages. Recorded in Numbers 21.29 in the New Living Translation says, What sorrow awaits you, O people of Moab? You are finished, O worshippers of Chemosh. Yet he chose to go to a place that was cursed. Making ungodly decisions will cost you dearly, even lead you and your family wants also in great suffering. Elimelech ended up dying in the land of idolaters, not a place where God is king and the house of bread. The Bible records that both these sons married Moabites. One of the wife's name was Opa and the other was Ruth. The names of the sons were Marlon Horses. The meaning was DK and dying. That was Ruth's husband. And Chilean, the meaning was sickness, which was Opa's husband. As the name suggested, these two young men died at a young age. They lived in Moab for only approximately 10 years. Naomi lost her husband and now lost her two sons. Broken and desperate. She decided to move back to Bethlehem in Judea as she had no support there in Moab. She was now in a greater financial crisis this day. Beloved, I say to you this day, the word of the Lord is, we are reminded wherever you are, in whichever Moab you are, we are reminded to go back where we belong, to the house of God. To the house where God has chosen Bethlehem to come back to Jesus. With Jesus, your famine, your suffering is subject to change. Ruth and Oprah decides to go with Naomi. Now Naomi pleads with them. He says, please do not follow me for I have nothing to give you. I have nothing to provide for you. She bids them to leave and go to their families. Opa eventually decides to go back to a family in Moab while Ruth was insistent to remain with Naomi. Now look at names. Opa means gazelle. We see she's a runner. She went away from Naomi. Ruth means friendship. She's a keeper. She clung to Naomi irrespective of the situation they were in. We read of the powerful declaration in Ruth 1 16 to 17. The NIB says, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. For where you go, I will go. For where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. Verse 17, where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. This, beloved, is the pivotal point in the life of Ruth the Moabite. When she makes a conscious decision to follow the God of Naomi. Who is the God of Naomi? It is Yahweh, the true and the living God. When she made that choice, suddenly there was a divine shift that took place in the heavenlies that was beginning to manifest upon the earth, upon her life. And so they journeyed. A breakthrough begins. Ruth and Naomi journeyed to Bethlehem. They walked approximately 113 kilometers from Moab to Bethlehem. When they reach Bethlehem, they go to Naomi's old house that she left earlier. This was a time now when they came to Bethlehem that things began to divinely shift. Remember the moment Ruth declared, your God is my God. So Naomi, something suddenly began to happen. When she stepped into the Naomi's house in Bethlehem, she entered a house of covenant. She entered a house of miracles, a house of the blessings. And something began to shift. The pivotal point that set the call of God into operation in her life. When they arrived, their beloved there is yet two women in this house that are end of the rope. 
In a bad situation, they entered there, but there was nothing for them to eat. There was no food. Naomi also returned home without her husband and without her two sons. She's now returning with a daughter-in-law who is a foreigner, a stranger to the covenant of Israel, a non-Jew. See what the word says. In Deuteronomy 23, 3, it is written, No Ammonites or Moabites may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. Yet, beloved, when Ruth made a decision to declare the God of Naomi as a God, God went against this word and against this curse upon the Ammonites and Moabites. And he changed and he shifted it around and he began to bless her. Her blessing was going to be so awesome, which you will hear just now. God was about to set root on a path of greatness. And I pray to you today, God is about to set you on your path of greatness. Amen. On the path of your breakthrough. As we call upon this God of Naomi, I say to you, every angel in heaven that is dedicated to you is going to move. There's going to be a divine shifting, a divine parting that is going to take place. I say there's going to be a war in the heavenlies that will manifest upon the earth. When you make a decision, God, your God, will move on your behalf. I say to you this day, everything... That is holding you down will be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is time for God's divine intervention. It is time for God's divine relocation. It is time for the position change and a status change. Here's a woman had nothing to eat. So Ruth sets out to get something to eat. She heads out to the field in the hope of gathering some grain to eat. In Ruth 2, 3 recorded, she went to glean in the field after the reapers. Gleaning is a practice of allowing the poor to, to follow reapers in the field. As they harvested barley, wheat, and the vineyards, they pick up the leftovers. By law, the Israelites were not supposed to strip the fields bare, but to leave some for the widows and some for the fatherless, and some for the poor. You can do a study on that. Read Leviticus 19, 9 to 10. And Deuteronomy 24, 19 to 22. In Ruth 2, 3, the Amplified. And also the New American Standard. The Bible records. She happened to come to that part of the field. Belonging to Boaz. In the midst, beloved. In the midst of so many fields. Integrated. It was hard to tell demarcations. Yeah, Ruth just happens to step into that section of the field that belongs to Boaz. Unbeknown to her, this man, this owner of this particular field that she stepped in was a name called Boaz. This man, Boaz, is a kinsman redeemer. She did not know. According to Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 to 6, a kinsman is a relative of a man who dies. He is granted permission to marry the man's widow in order to continue the lineage. According to God's remarkable sovereignty, it turned out that Boaz was a relative of Ruth's husband, Yo. He's kingsman redeemer. Now all this is taking place according to God's divine orchestration. It was not by luck. It was not by chance. But it was by the will of the ever living God. We see how God carefully orchestrates and directs all things for his purpose. Working together events of this present to bring about the culmination of his providential plans. How, it, how amazing is it? Absolutely incredible that she happens to find herself in the field of Boaz. Watch this. At the time of day when Boaz visits that 
particular field. To understand their full impact, you must understand this grain was planted over a very large area. To an outsider, it looks like one continuous field. And I've understood that when I first time flew over Malawi during the harvest season, all I could see was green and green. You could see no demarcations. But when I began to travel through Malawi and meet with the leaders, and I said, who owns all these massive farms? They said, massive farms? No, sir. You see all those thousand houses, each one has a portion of field, but it is interconnected and each one only knows their mark and connections. Yeah. So is this woman, a stranger to Bethlehem, a, a foreigner to this land, divinely relocated from the field of Moab that was cursed, now coming to a field of Boaz that was blessed. This particular field, wow! Beloved, Ruth being in the field, in this section belong to Boaz, is very high odds. Almost impossible if you did not know that demarcation. Now Ruth is unaware of this great coincidence. She's unaware of this great guidance by God to the location she came upon. This is where the breakthrough and miracle unfolds. In the midst of the awful affliction, God has a plan of deliverance. A plan was so great that the suffering and the setbacks was about to change to blessedness and glory. Boaz, watch this. Just happens now to be a bachelor and a godly man. Ruth just happens to find favor in the reaper's eye. And she just happens to be working in the field where Boaz visits. Come on. All this just happens in Bethlehem. That is to be the birthplace of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. This is divine. This is divine playing out to church. All this is not just happening, but God's plan for good. God plans to bring root to purpose and to fulfill destiny. And so I pray today in your life. When Boaz meets Ruth, Ruth finds favor with him. In the normal gleaning, the poor gathered approximately 50 pounds of grain, which is approximately 22 and a half kilograms of grain during the harvest season. But in that season, God favored Ruth. She gathered approximately 1,500 pounds, 680 kilograms in that season of reaping. Enough for a whole year, even enough to sell and make a profit. What if God gave Ruth her expectations of normal gleaning? She would have been in poverty after a couple of months and be begging. Ruth would have had very little grain to sustain her. Beloved, many a time, God is silent to your prayer and requests and expectations. The reason he has more for you. It is because many a times you cannot see the bigger picture. As we continue in the story that is so glorious in chapter 4, we see Boaz marries Ruth. He becomes a kinsman redeemer. The breakthrough continues in Ruth 4.3. The Lord gave Ruth conception. This is a miracle. As Ruth was previously married for approximately 10 years. And she had no children. Her womb was shut. God kept her barren for the time being. Because God has prepared her to carry a seed. That was going to be the lineage of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Are you hearing that? A Moabite. A foreigner. A one who may be a cast out of the covenant of Israel. God gathered together to be of the lineage where his son Jesus Christ will be born. I say to you. God hand is upon you. I say to you this day, you woman, 
Even I'm talking about those who failed. You could be in a drug den. You could be in a prostitute house. You could have been in a place of poverty and abuse. You could be in a place that is bound by men. And you've been raped and you've been abused. You say there's nothing left in you. I got news for you. When my God, when you surrender to him, he'll make you brand new. When his blood washes you, when he touches touches you, you will never be the same person again. The choice is yours. Are you willing to receive your miracle today? We find that Ruth conceives and brings forth a son named Obed. Out of Obed came the, uh, Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. And out of this lineage, Jesus Christ came. Wow, wow. Obed means servant, serving worshippers. In Mark 10, 45, Jesus came and declared himself as servant and serving worshippers. Ruth, an idolater, a Gentile, a Moabite, a widow, a non-Israelite. Beloved, comes to the key lineage of the Messiah. Now, how awesome is that? God can use a nobody to become a somebody. In fact, he can use a anybody to become a somebody. Here is the one who was left destitute. Ended up having more than enough. But she married Boaz. God prepared it. Boaz was a rich man. He blessed Ruth. Ruth's latter was greater than the past. If God can use Ruth, he can use you. If God can make a way of success for you, beloved, he can do the same for you. Beloved, if we give up now because of your trials and circumstances, you will lose. You will miss what God has planned for you. Boaz was willing to pay the price for you, Ruth, because of his love for Ruth. Jesus was willing to pay the price for you. Yes, you. Yes, you. Because he loved you. You may be rejected and despised, cast out, forsaken. But God wants you to be his. Jesus wants you to be his. According to the law, you do not qualify for the blessings. But according to God's grace, you qualify. Amen. I say to you, what Boaz did for Ruth, Jesus will do for you. Jesus already paid the price in full. He already paid the price of full ransom. All you need to do is accept his love and deliverance. Beloved, when the call of God is upon your life, the past means nothing to him. It is how you play out your current position. Your current state does not have to be the finality of your life. God used Ruth. He can use you. Yes, you. I declare upon you women of the most high God. God is shifting you to that position of suddenly. It shall be said of you. It just happened. It shall be said of you. It just happened. Your end is mapped out. Ruth's position shifted when she declared that God of Naomi is her God. This set her on the path of relocation from suffering to blessedness. Beloved, this day, leave your shame behind. Leave your past hurts behind. Leave your spiritual Moab and move to the spiritual Bethlehem. Return to covenant. Return to Jesus. Return to the promises and cling to it. Your situation, I prophesy, is subject to change. It is temporary. God's plan is in operation to move you from darkness to light, from setback to glory. Ruth 2.14, Boaz, a type of Christ. Boaz, a kinsman, redeemer, bridegroom, a savior, a deliverer says, Come, hear and eat of the bread and dip your piece of bread in wine. This Jesus Christ, King of kings, Lord of Lord, Master of the universe, ruler of the universe, says, come, eat at my table. Come, eat at my, the King of kings says, come. Yes, you, you deserve to sit at his table. Come and eat. Come and have communion with me. Boaz publicly redeemed Ruth. 
He made a public statement of a redemption. And so did Jesus do publicly upon the cross of Calvary. I've got news for you today. Jesus wants to be your bride. You may be cast out and rejected in society, but Jesus will have you to be his bride. Beloved, some of you have hidden secrets, things that happen to you. You have not told no one of the rape of violence you've experienced and the torments and the, 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 the abuse that you went through. All this happened in secret. You think you are, you think you're the only one who knows and the one who violated you knows. Some of you from kids, you were abused and raped as a little girl. And you think you're the only one knows. The enemy wants you to keep it a secret and keep you in suffering of living that trauma all the days of your life. This must end today. This must stop today. I have news for you, beloved. There is one who is the kinsman redeemer, who knows it all. Every secret thing that happened to you, his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus, however, cannot act on your behalf. He can only intervene. He can only bring deliverance and healing if you call upon him and ask him for his help. Like an advocate, he may know all about your case, but he cannot act on your behalf until you give him permission, until you engage him to represent you. And then he will represent you. Beloved, watch this. Jesus is not asking you to expose anyone. He wants you just come to him. He's ready to clean you. He's ready to help you. He's ready to make you whole again. He's ready to restore your dignity again. He's ready to bless you again. But it starts with one of the next, the hardest things is. It starts with forgiveness. Release that person. With Jesus, yes, with Jesus. Power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. That will the power of God will come upon you. Yes, that will give you the strength to do it. You see, you can't get free if you do not forgive. This curse, the cycle of abuse, must be broken yes. now in the name of Jesus. As Jesus forgave, I say to you, you forgive. Forgiveness, beloved, opens the doors for your miracle. It opens the door for the supernatural power of God to operate in your life. It does not matter who you are. It does not matter where you come from. It does not matter where you have been or what you have done. It does not matter where you are right now. I say to you this day, your current condition, if you are deep in sin, it doesn't matter. It is subject to change through Jesus Christ. He will wipe away all the images. He will wipe away that sin. And he will make you brand new. Ruth married Naomi's son. A Jew. Listen to this. But did not have the blessing of the Jew. Only until she declared and confessed the God of Naomi. The God of her husband to be her God. The blessing came. So too, beloved, you can be a Christian. You can be in a Christian home or married to a Christian. But the blessing comes when you yourself confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, you will enjoy blessings. But that is partial blessings. But the full measure comes when you make this Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Jesus declares in John 10, 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. Jesus is the protector of the sheep. Yes. He is the shepherd. He watches over. He will watch over you 24-7. No one and nothing can snatch him out of your hand. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
all things, all things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It is time for the old in your life to pass away. It is time to be made new. It is time to let go. And let God do what he has in your life. Giving up is not an option. Giving up is not an option. Suicide is not an option. Don't allow yourself to suffer anymore. It is time for healing. It is time to be set free. Ruth made a choice. She, she chose well. Today, beloved, there is an advocate. His name is Jesus. He hasn't lost a case yet. He wants to fight for you. He wants to deliver you. Come on, there's no court in the land that can stand against him. In fact, this, uh, this, this advocate has such an anointing that every handwriting against you will be wiped out. Yes. Every image in your mind, thoughts, conscience, and subconscious will be wiped out. He is able to do the impossible, the miracle, the invincible he is able to do in your life. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. This is who we serve. This great advocate, Jesus Christ. Today, you have a choice to remain in that situation or a choice to be set free. I trust you want to be set free. I trust that you will choose so that you can experience this divine shift, relocation that as I'm talking about. Jesus is waiting to set you on a path, a new path that he has chosen for you. Like Ruth, I want to say to you today, now, by the way, Boaz represents Jesus. So, it happened. I want him to declare you happened to come in the field of Boaz. Let it be said of you. It happened you met Boaz. It happened you found favor. It happened you got blessed. It just happened that your life was suddenly and completely turned around. I say it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's happening already. It's going to happen fully. I say, come on. Come on. It's going to happen in Jesus' name. Joel 2.25, God will restore your life again. Your life is not too far gone for Jesus. Understand that it's not too far gone for Jesus. Your troubles are not too big for him. But, is your faith this morning big enough to trust him for your deliverance? Is it big enough to say amen to him who is Christ? Are you ready for divine relocation? Are you ready for your healing this morning? Are you ready to call upon this name of Jesus Christ? And before I pray, I want to give you the opportunity to come to Jesus. To surrender your lives to him. If you choose this morning to surrender your life to Jesus, then I want you to pray with me the prayer of salvation. And thereafter, I'm going to pray prophesy and release the prayer of breakthrough in your life. I'm praying the heavens will open. Today I'm praying war on this woman's day. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob with his angels is going to shift some things. It's going to break through for you. I say to you today let not another moment go With that suffering. Wherever you are. Say pastor. I want this God of Naomi. I want the great time. I want Jesus Christ. If it is you. Pray with me right now. Almighty God. And heavenly father. I have heard. Your word. And I receive it. I want this God of Naomi. I want this God of the breakthrough in my life. I want a divine shift in my life. This morning, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. 
I believe he was born. I believe he died. I believe he rose again on the third day. And according to the confession of my faith, this morning I am born again. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I renounce and I denounce my past. I cancel my past in Jesus' name. I call forth the blood to cleanse me now. And I welcome you, Holy Spirit, come into my life and lead and direct me in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Welcome into the house of the Lord. Welcome into the company this day, into the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Welcome into the kingdom of God. Now it's not over. Now I'm just getting started with a prayer. For you right now, please don't move. I want you to be focused right now. Because this is the time of the divine of the Lord, of divine impartation. Get ready. I want you to believe with me for your miracle in Jesus' name. Beloved, I have some of my pastors here. They're raising their hand to you. And the believing God for your miracle this morning. And I'm going to pray for your breakthrough. But I want you to be in agreement. I want you to believe this morning. That God is able. I want you to desire to be loosed. And don't lose this opportunity. Father, I come to you in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior yes. Jesus Christ. I hallow at your name and I give you glory yes. and honor and praise yes. that is due to you. Yes. I bless your holy yes. name on high. Yes. Father, this day and this morning, I bring yes. the women before you yes. in the mighty name yes. of Jesus. Jesus. Yes. Your daughters, yes. your yes. beloved to, the, to you this morning. Yes. Father, bless them this day. Let your grace abound upon them. Let your mercy be seen upon them in Jesus' mighty name. Hear yes. their cries this day, yes. O oh Lord. And Father, this day, see their sufferings, yes. my Father, yes. in Jesus' Jesus name deliver them in Jesus name make a way for them I pray set them free father show Jesus. forth your power and Amen. might in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth show yourself strong on their behalf in Jesus mighty name in Jesus name we are crying out this morning answer their prayers this day grant them their hearts desire father I thank you this morning there is nothing absolutely yes. nothing for you this day we believe my god is able we believe yes. my god can yes. turn this situation around yes. we yes. believe my god this day you can set them free in jesus name yes and by the authority vested in us through the word in matthew 18 18 that whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven by the authority vested in us in Jesus' name and by his word. I bind every curse that has come upon women. I render it powerless in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I drive it out of their life in Jesus' name. And I release the multitude of God's blessing upon women this day. I bind every spirit of infirmity that has gripped women. Every sickness from the crown of your head to your feet this day. I render it bound in the name of Jesus. I lose healing upon you now. By the stripes of Jesus, daughter of God, be healed. The word of God is flesh unto you. Be healed. I release it with long life. He will satisfy you and show you his mercy. This day I release, I lose the word of God. I bind every spirit of abuse and violence against you in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of sexual violation and every spirit of rape against you in the mighty name of Jesus. I lose God's divine protection. I declare when the enemy comes like a blood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up 
purpose in it. I give you the name of Jesus. I speak love. I release love and respect and protection upon you in Jesus name. I release the blood. I release the blood of Jesus upon you. I pray the enemy will come one way but he will flee seven ways in the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of divorce and separation in Jesus name. I lose healing in marriages. Yes, what God has put Thank together. You. Let no man put asunder. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray your kingdom come. Yes. Righteousness, peace yes. and joy. In the Holy Ghost. I bind every spirit of abortion. In Jesus name. And I lose the fear of God. I lose the love of God. I pray righteousness and justice. Upon every woman. In the name of Jesus. I bind every spirit of miscarriages in yeah. Jesus name Jesus. I break the cycle of curse that has come to the bloodline now in the name of Jesus I lose healing to your womb I lose strength to your womb I lose health to your womb now I declare the word of the Lord you shall bring yes. forth with joy Yes. I prophesy you shall go forth and multiply I prophesy your children shall be like all the plants around the table. You shall carry to full term. You shall go forth in joy in Jesus name. I bind every curse of slavery and sex trafficking. Yes, I render it bound. I expose every woman that is enslaved. I expose every woman that is held captive. My God, in Jesus' name, release them, release them, release them. I break every chain. I tear down every wall. By every prison door, be open now in the name of Jesus. I call in the mighty God, your divine intervention in Jesus' name. My God, you set them free. Bring justice to the perpetrators in Jesus' name. My God, I thank you now. Now, Lord, like Paul and Silas, the divine of the Lord, let the angels go and war on their behalf. I bind every curse and spirit of poverty and lack, and I lose prosperity. The Lord is thy shepherd, you shall not want. The Lord is your Jireh, the Lord is your Al Shaddai. The Lord delights in your prosperity. In him you shall lack no good thing. I loose it upon you. I bind every spirit of anxiety and mental condition and suicide. Yes. I lose the covenant of peace. Yes. I lose a sound mind yes. upon yes. you now in the name of Jesus. Yes. I pray the loose yes. strength and hope upon yes. you now in Jesus name. I bind and I break every yes. curse that has come to the bloodline in Jesus yes. name. You shall be set free. I appropriate the victory of Calvary in Jesus name over your life. I bind all injustices upon your life. I release justice that you deserve. You shall no longer be insignificant. You shall no longer be unknown. You shall no longer be unacceptable. I render every evil against you powerless in Jesus name. I bind every curse pronounced against your life in Jesus name. No evil shall befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh unto you. I release the blood of Jesus upon yes. your life. Yes. Over all that you have. Yes. And I say this day when the enemy comes like a flood. You will raise up a standard. Father this day. In Jesus name. Deliver your daughters. Yes. Let not the yes. enemy triumph over them. Have mercy upon yes. them this day. They are the apple of your eye. Just one touch. And the darkness will flee. Turn their tears into laughter. Give yes. them hope where there's no yes. hope. I thank you this morning for divine relocation. I thank you this morning for divine shifting. I thank you this morning, this day in Jesus' name for hearing us. I thank you this morning for every miracle. I thank you this morning for every breakthrough. I thank you this morning for every intervention. For the women now, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Breakthrough is yours. Deliverance is yours. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you now. In Jesus' mighty name.
Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It is as if I can see your face now. It is as if I can see your eyes right now. And I can see there is a shine. I can see there is peace. This is your day of miracle. Yes. Trust God. Stand firm. The relocation, the divine shifting is at place right now. He will fight for you in Jesus' name. Woman, again, we want to say we love you. As the son of the house, Gresham said at the opening, we appreciate you. You are special. I want to say to you this day, the church is so strong because of you. The number of intercessors across the nations of the world is filled with women. This church is strong because of you. And I say, God bless you. God bless you. Amen and amen. I want you to know that there's some battles that you will face that you don't even have to fight because your praise can go before you. Before you go into the courtroom, you better send praise before you. Before you go into the interview, you better send praise before you. God will fight battles that you don't even have to fight. That's what your praise will do. Your praise is weapon. And if you can begin to praise God, prison doors will come open for you. Chains will fall off of your life. I want you to know that the prison of your past, the door will come open when you begin to praise. The chains of depression and the chains of bondage, the chains of sickness, the chains of betrayal and hurt and backstabbing and addiction and all of those things, they will fall off of your life when you begin to praise God. Girl, use your weapon. Praise is your weapon. It is powerful and mighty.